guys, Mr. Bowman here. This is the first merit focused video and we're looking at all the merit questions from the Algebra 2015 examination. Let's get straight into question number one. Um, Ronnie hired a bike. Um, it costs $8 for two hours, then $3 for every additional hour. The ride in total is $23. How long was the bike hired for? Um, so this one's going to be a bit annoying actually to think about it, mainly because of that two hour part of the question. But what I'm going to say is let's say H equals the or total number of hours hired. So total number of hours hired. So when we set up our equation, it's going to be $8 representing the first two hours. And then that's going to be added to the $3 for every hour after that. So if the total is H, we're going to go H minus 2. So this is all of the hours after 2 hours. So I'm taking away the 2 hours that's already been accounted for by that $8 there. And the sum of those gets us to 23 over there. From that, we can do a bit of algebra. We're going to use our linear solving skills. We're going to go minus 8, minus 8. So 3 bracket h minus 2 is equal to 15. I'm going to go divide by 3 here, divide by 3 here. I should note you could also have expanded the brackets, but I'm not going to worry about doing that. So we've got h minus 2 is equal to, uh, what does that come to? 5. And then finally, I'm going to go plus 2, plus 2. So h is equal to 7 hours in total. Um, so what this means is she hired the bike for the 2 hours, costing the $8, and then another 5 hours, each costing $3 per hour. Now on to question number 2. And simply, we've been asked to factorize all of that nonsense. Just going to start by getting the question down. So it's 3 a b squared minus 4 a cubed b plus a b squared and all of that is over 4 a b squared so having written down the question i can see there's a lot of a's and b's everywhere so i'm thinking i need to start cancelling things out i need to start simplifying when i can so the first thing i've noticed is these two parts here, 3ab squared plus ab squared, they are like terms. So I'm going to simplify the numerator. So that's going to become 4a, oh gosh, 4ab squared minus 4a cubed b. All of that is over 4ab squared. At this stage here, I can see there are 4s everywhere, there are a's everywhere, there are b's everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize the numerator. I'm going to take out all the common factors, and then I'm going to cancel them out with what matches on the bottom. So up the top, both parts of this numerator, they both got a 4 in common. They have 1a in common, and they have 1b in common. So then I've got my close bracket. On the first one, there is a b left over, and in the second one, there is an a squared left over. And all of that is over 4ab squared. Now the 4 is going to cancel, the a is going to cancel, and the b is going to cancel out 1, leaving one of the b's on the bottom. So my final simplified answer is going to be b minus a squared over b. So that there was enough to get your merit mark here. But I just want to note, you actually can go a little bit further. If I split this up, I can go b over b minus a squared over b. And b over b can become 1. So that would have been 1 minus a squared over b. So maybe that's a bit simpler than the other one. If you got to that answer, you also would have got your merit mark. So it doesn't matter which one of those you landed on, you would have got your marks. And now on to question number 3. And if y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 10, for what values of x, so what values of x will y be negative? So this one's a bit annoying. It looks like a quadratic inequation question. Um, and the question's really asking us, us is when is y going to be less than zero or when is it going to be negative? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my inequality. So zero is 
greater than x squared plus 3x minus 10. We're then going to factorize over here, and that is going to be x plus 5, x minus 2. And at this point here, you can't really solve a quadratic in equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that to a quadratic equation. So 0 is equal to x plus 5, x minus 2, which gives me negative 1 as my first answer. Oh gosh, and I forgot to write the x2. And positive 2 as the second answer. So these here tell us about the x-intercepts. So I'm going to solve this graphically from the stage here. Um, and let's say this here is 2, which is the second answer over there. And that x-intercept there would be negative 5. So these values relate to the x-intercepts of this imaginary parabola I'm drawing. And up here, because it's positive x squared, I know it's a positive parabola. So my parabola would roughly look like this here. And I now need to link it back to the question. So when is y negative? So that relates to anything below the x-axis. So that means it would be starting from negative 5. This is all negative. This is negative. Getting up to 2 is negative. As soon as we go above, that's positive. So anything greater than negative 5, less than positive 2, will give us a negative y value. So therefore, negative 5, x, and 2. Anything greater than negative 5 and less than positive 2. On to question number four, and Cherie has had an operation and needs to build up her strength by walking. She will slowly increase the amount of walking she does. Um, she wants to increase the walking until she can walk 160 minutes each day. The first week, she's going to go for a 10-minute walk. Um, on each Monday, she doubles her time. So doubles, um, good cue, might be an exponential relationship coming up. Um, the time in which she walks can be modeled by the equation, and perfect, it was an exponential one, and we can see the doubles represented in the 2, and the initial 10 minutes represented in the 10. After how many weeks will it take her to reach her goal of 160 minutes per day? So just a reminder about these time-related questions, there's always a weird thing. You'll calculate the answer, you then quickly got to explain what it means and have a think um, about it as well. So let's jot down our equation, t equals 10 times 2n to the power of 1. Um, we're looking for t equals 160. So 160, t goes away, 160 has been substituted in, 10 times 2n minus 1. Um, because this is an exponential equation, I'm looking to develop the other side of the equation to have a base of 2. I'm then going to cancel out the bases. Um, so, oh, I guess divide by 10 is really all I can do at this stage. 16 is equal to 2n minus 1. And I really, really like 16 because I know that's got something 2 to the power of something. So let's quickly check that what, what that is. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And then bingo, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. We can see that doubling every time. So that's going to become 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 2n minus 1. I can now cancel out. That was that strategy I was looking to implement, which means 4 is equal to n minus 1. I'm then going to go plus 1 plus 1. n is equal to 5. So at this stage here, this is where it gets a bit annoying because it's always got to do with time. So just thinking about the question, she starts on the Monday, finishes the week, and then she doubles for the next week, so times 2. She does that again, does that again, does that again, and then on this Monday, the fifth Monday, because our answer is 5, she does that. So the question says, how many weeks will it take her to reach her goal? She actually hasn't finished that fifth week. It's doubled at the beginning of the fifth week, or after these four four weeks. So that is what I'm looking to do to explain here. It will take, I'm just explaining it in context, it will take Cherie four weeks until she can walk 
160 minutes. So that wraps up that question. As I said, the time questions always have this annoying issue. So do keep an eye out them. It's a really, really good way to get stuck. I, when I looked at the marking schedule, you did get a merit if you got to n equals 5. They were happy with that. But that there was certainly a better answer than n equals 5. On to question number 5. Our last question for this exam. Um, I've got an equation down the bottom, bottom and it says to find out r. Um, don't really need to read the context, but let's have a read through anyway. So five people on a camp catch a stomach bug. The bug is spreading at a constant rate, which is r. That's what we're trying to find out. At the end of three days, two or 320 people have the stomach bug. This can be modeled by this scenario here. Find r. Yeah, so this time around, we've got... 360 equals 5r cubed. I'm just trying to find r. So I'm going to start by dividing by 5, dividing by 5. Um, so that gets me to 64 equals r cubed. Just a reminder, we don't have calculators in this exam. So hopefully you're good with your division. Feel free to use long division strategies to help you through that. Um, to get rid of the cube, I'm going to do a cube root. So r is going to be equal to the cube root of 64. This one's a bit annoying. Cube root of 64, what's that? But because it ends with a 4, it's divisible by 4, so it's probably going to be 4. But let's quickly check. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 to the power of 2 is 16. And yes, if I times that again by 4, I get to 64. So this here, easy enough, r is equal to 4. Just a note for this question, if you're not good with your division and you're not good with your powers, you're probably going to struggle with these questions. If you are, then that will be an absolute piece of cake. So make sure you develop those two skills so you are confident in your exam. This wraps up all the merit questions from 2015. Hopefully you found them useful. Keep an eye for the next ones.